I I feel I, I literally start every single video by saying I've not filmed video in a while but I've been having a lot of stuff happening in my life and also quite a lot a substantial amount of imposter syndrome being on YouTube um, and doing a lot of things like being self-employed generally so uh, that's why I think I just took a lot of time I, I never really decide to like take time off of anything really but I just just, just haven't felt like filming anything and um, and so I think that is pretty much why I've also been working a bit more um, on other stuff so there's just not been as much time but also we're coming out of a pandemic which I've found very really quite difficult I think more subconsciously than anything and that's why filming hasn't happened and yeah it's mainly imposter syndrome to be honest it's really an annoying thing and just like being self-conscious and all that horrible annoying stuff I am drinking one of these today a cafe latte like the cold ones and I love them so much they're probably really bad for the planet although you do recycle the whole thing but I just think it's just like a really wasteful thing but they taste so good um, I thought today I would film a little Q&A of questions I asked actually on YouTube I it was my first time using the YouTube question section or like the community section which was good fun um, and I feel like my Instagram following and my YouTube following are different people. I feel like Instagram for me is a lot more people that I kind of know and YouTube is people that follow me for anxiety stuff. So I think they're two different things really. So I thought I'll ask on YouTube because that's where I'm going to be putting this video. Makes most sense to me. And I was really glad that there was a whole host of different questions. Um, some anxiety, some not. And so I thought I would answer them. I'm going to try and not go on and on about each answer and question and just kind of get to the point. But I find that difficult in life. So I'm going to try. The first question is, so you think you'll ever... Let's do that again. So you think you'll switch from paper books to Kindle question mark? I've thought long and hard about this many times as I think long and hard about most things in life. Um, I've thought at this point in my life where I live on my own, you know, books are a big part of my life um, and I love shopping for books, it's probably my favourite thing to shop for. Um, I love going into small bookshops, charity shops, big bookshops, bloody any bookshop and just browsing for ages and then I just cannot go into a bookshop and not buy anything. So right now no, but I think there might be times in my life where I'm a bit busier or when you know it's just going to be easier and more accessible to have a Kindle then maybe I would think about getting a Kindle. Um, there's many things to like about a Kindle but you just don't get the book smell or the enjoyableness of going around a bookshop so I don't know on that one. I would like to hear your thoughts if you have a Kindle please let me know why you love having a Kindle. The next question is, how are you coping with slash do you have any advice for COVID vaccine side effect anxiety? I thought that was such a good question because I honestly didn't really think about it that much. Um, I think because I'm quite, oh God, I just punched myself in the face. I think because I'm quite far away from getting my vaccine, I think um, I've not thought too much about it. It's crossed my mind a few times being like, oh, that's freaking me out a bit, but I've never properly thought about it. I. Both of my parents have had a vaccine, uh, loads of people I know have had vaccines. I don't think I know anyone that's told me that have had both vaccines um, and most people I know that have had vaccines have been absolutely fine. My dad said he felt better after his vaccine. Um, I know somebody that's high risk that's had their vaccine, they said they felt absolutely fine. There's only one person I know that said they felt tired and achy, like a bit fluey for like a day or two after and then they felt totally fine. Um, generally speaking, I'm all right with it. Um, there was somebody the other day actually that told me that their husband had a really bad experience of side effects. I'm not going to go into them because I don't want to be triggering or put anyone off getting the vaccine. Um, but that kind of made me think, oh God, oh God, the thought of me getting a vaccine and that happening to me makes me really anxious. But I think it's just the same as kind of COVID anxiety in a way of like, 
the probability of you getting it is very small. The amount of times I've had vaccines, I had va all my vaccinations, my parents gave me all my vaccinations when I was a child. I remember getting the vaccination at school, I think it was for cervical cancer, you got three with that one, I was fine. Um, so any, I'm obviously, any medication or you know, blood tests or anything I've ever had in my life, I've never had an, like an allergic reaction to. So I don't see why I'd have an allergic reaction to this one or a bad experience. I'm actually as well okay with getting things like the flu. Like as long as it's not actually getting ill physically. I don't want to say the word because I know that can be a really triggering word here, but you know what I mean? Then I'm probably fine. It's just the thought of that happening that really, really freaks me out. But I guess I'm going to just maybe when I get my vaccine take a couple of days off after it or just, you know, have loads of food in the house so I don't need to go to the shop or um, make sure that I have stuff to have a nice bath and that kind of thing. Just look after myself. Um, but I think it's just one of those things that it has to be done. In my perspective, everyone's got different perspectives on the COVID vaccine. I'm definitely pro-vaccination. And so I think most people, to be honest, anxiety or not, I think most people probably are a bit like, don't want to get a vaccine really who wants to have a vaccine and who wants to feel possibly not very nice for a couple of days so i think you are in good company with the amount of people that are apprehensive about getting it there's more positive stories 100 percent way more positive stories about the vaccine than negative stories so i'm just focusing on them do you have any advice for dealing with anxiety and panic attacks at work and school um yes i think work and school are two very very different things and I might film a video on each because I have had panic attacks and anxiety at school and I've had panic attacks and anxiety at work and they're very different things. Uh, the one thing I will say just now is if you are somebody at school or that kind of environment and you're younger, um, I think that mental health services tend to get better when you're older. They tend to, you tend to be more aware of your anxiety and mental health stuff and I feel like people take you more seriously when you're growing up. I'm 25 now, and if I speak to my doctor now, they take me completely seriously. If I tell my work now about my mental health, they take me completely seriously. I'm also self-employed, so it's obviously very different than being employed in like a big business or whatever. Um, but school anxiety was really hard because I think I left school, and I, I honestly don't remember when I left school about five or six years ago and it was very very different I feel hopefully it was very different because it was a really bad experience um, but I'm going to film whole videos on both of those topics the one piece of advice I'd give just now is to know yourself the most and people will have opinions, teachers have opinions and the, diff thing, the difficult thing at school is that teachers have this bizarre authority thing over pupils and I'm not saying all teachers are bad people my mother is a teacher but it's more that it's like you can't argue back with a teacher or you can't say actually you're wrong on that subject I know more about anxiety than you or I know more about my anxiety than you schools have funny dynamic and I think that makes it much harder to get help or to be taken seriously and um, so just know yourself um, as much as you possibly can um, and hopefully try and find teachers and maybe learning assistants, stuff like that in school that could possibly be on your side. But I will film full videos on that. Somebody said, do you have any tips on not letting one panic attack or two turn into a panic attack cycle? How do you deal with panic hangovers? Um, that was, I remember when I had my worst ever panic attack. That was the probably the worst thing coming out of that panic attack being like, if that ever happens again, especially if that happens soon, I don't know how I'm going to cope because it feels like <sighs> terrifying, really terrifying to think that you'd have to go through that again. When you have a panic attack, the aftermath of it, psychological and physical, is really difficult. And I think what we need to remember the most is that our physical body and our mind are so unbelievably connected. So I feel like if you're resting one, then you're naturally resting the other. Um, I remember when I'd have a really bad panic attack, I would make sure the next day I did absolutely nothing, kept my mind as busy as possible with colouring or crafts or even stupid games on your phone or whatever it might be that makes you feel relaxed or not thinking about anxiety. 
but they were resting your body with something stupid on TV, rewatch you like your the worst show that you just love. Um really general self-care stuff, not worrying about anything else. Um and then it sometimes feels like when you've had a big panic attack that you're starting all over again and that everything you've done till that point doesn't matter because something really awful's happened. But even if you are kind of starting again from that last panic attack, you are taking with you all of the knowledge that you've learned the past however many years or months since your last panic attack. You're never ever starting from scratch. You're always just adding on more. And sometimes a panic attack's a good thing to be like, okay, that panic attack taught me that actually that really helps when I'm having a panic attack or that that medication helps or it's nice to know that that person's gonna really understand or it's, I need to remember that person doesn't understand so I'm not gonna speak to them about it. And another thing is, I used to think the panic attacks were completely random, there was no way of knowing and sometimes panic attacks can feel or are quite random but I would say most of the time there is a series of events or thoughts that happen before a panic attack, whether it's something you're really not looking forward to or things that are subconscious, maybe your partner said something to you that's kind of squirreled away inside you and then somebody else on the street says something to you, you know, it can be a series of tiny things or it can be quite a few bigger things that you just don't realise is making you feel as bad as you feel. The underlying pandemic, I think that's been going on for a year and a half, so you might think it shouldn't be affecting you still, but have a look at what is surrounding you um, and be honest with yourself about what's surrounding you. Are you in a relationship that maybe isn't good for you? Are you studying for a course that maybe you're not quite ready for? Is there some job interviews coming up that you don't really feel are for you? Um, there's usually something that is making you feel that way. The next question is, I'm not sure if you still live there, but I wondered what you thought about Edinburgh as a city. Is it good for someone with anxiety? Um, this is a really interesting question. I've always lived in Edinburgh my whole life, from the whole 25 years I've been alive. I've lived in Edinburgh. I've lived in different parts of Edinburgh. I used to live on the complete other side of Edinburgh and I've never been quite in the city centre so I don't know what it would be like to live in the city centre, I imagine quite crazy. I live um, in a seaside town near Edinburgh, probably like a 20 minute bus journey. Um, I don't know, I don't take buses but I imagine that's how I would take on the bus. Um, I absolutely love living in Edinburgh so much. There's so much in Edinburgh that is um, there's so much nature, there's so many green spaces, there's so much history, there's so much beautiful architecture, there's so many things to do. I love living in Edinburgh. It might not always be the most friendly place, like where I live, just outside of Edinburgh, it's super friendly, everyone knows each other, it's really nice. But I think the further you get into it, maybe it's just like a city thing, I imagine London's much worse. But when you get into it more of like, it can be quite individualistic and people aren't as friendly. I know that Glasgow, which is, I think the biggest city in Scotland, which is about an hour away from Edinburgh, is very friendly and people are really like community minded there. And it's not as much like that in Edinburgh, but for somebody with anxiety, it depends on what your anxiety is, you know what I mean? If you're somebody that doesn't like feeling cramped, I think Edinburgh is quite spacious and airy from my perspective. Um, it's not super cramped and claustrophobic. I never feel like that. Um, and if you look for community, there's like a million, there's always gonna be community wherever you live, if you look for it, I think, uh, and people that are like-minded to you. But yeah, if you are moving to Edinburgh, let me know, and I can tell you all the great things about Edinburgh and why you should live here. The next comment, the next question is, what medications did you find most helpful and why? Out of all of the medications I've ever had for anxiety, the number one that makes me, well, I mean, the best medication for anxiety for me is Valium. The best medication for anybody with anxiety, I imagine, is some form of Valium because that completely stops the anxiety. It's almost like just, you know, it just does. Um, but non-Valium wise, because it's not something you can take every day, it's very addictive. It's something that you should really use sparingly. And if you're somebody that knows that you couldn't use it sparingly, then I would say probably stay away from it. It's really not safe to be using a lot and 
also might not be safe with other medications. It's something that doctors give out very, f not very frequently at all, unless you have like a big backlog of anxiety symptoms and stuff like that. Um, so apart from that, I need to be honest, that is my favorite medication, um, would be my antinausea tablets. They've completely changed my life. I have a metaphobia, so that's why um, any antiemetics are gonna just make me feel so much more calm. Um, I am on cyclazine hydro hydrochloride, which is just my favourite thing. Um, but I am also on citalopram, which is for anxiety. It's an antidepressant. I was speaking to my doctor about it the other day. I was like, why am I on antidepressant? I love depression. And she was like, it's just a stupid name. I don't know why they say they're antidepressants, but they're for anxiety, OCD, you know, depression, for loads of different illnesses you give them out for. So um, I've always got on quite well with citalopram. The only thing that I don't get on well with is if I forget to take it for a couple of days and then the side effects are horrible. Um, but if I take it every day, I don't feel, you know, any side effects, I don't think. I maybe need to sleep a bit more. That's about it. I never feel horrible from them at all. So they're the medications I'd recommend. The next question is, how or when did you tell your partner about your anxiety? Right in the beginning or when you've known each other for a while? Well, Nick's art, I'll tell you. I was on Tinder when me and my, I had an ex-boyfriend, we were together for a while, we split up and then a few months later, maybe a month later, I got Tinder. Um, when I got Tinder, whenever I was speaking to somebody, I would tell them straight away about my anxiety. And for me, I didn't really have a choice because I have, I have agoraphobia and so my, ability to meet up with people they had to meet me very close to me to my house so they pretty much had to know straight away that i have anxiety i can't i might feel really anxious on our date and i might need to leave or blah -de blah so what i started doing was when i started speaking to somebody and i liked them and i thought i wanted to go on a date with them is i just sent them my youtube channel and be like this is extremely uh I couldn't put myself out on the line anymore than me literally explaining my IBS, <laughs> my anxiety and just my life than just sending them what I've been filming online for years, um, which was really hard. And there was definitely some times, I'll be honest, where people were like, oh no, not for me. And I'd be like, cool, whatever, see you later. Um, but I thought it was quite handy to like fish out people that were right for me and that understood. Um, and so I did that with my partner that I'm, I've been with for three years. I met him on Tinder, sent him my YouTube videos, he was like cool. Um, he, it's quite unfair because he got definitely a head start of um, like getting to know me. He could, I would love that if I was going on a date with somebody on Tinder and I could just like get to know everything about them because everybody does a little Instagram and Facebook stock that he could literally stock my whole life. So yeah, he got the upper hand there. That was good for him. My last question is, what kind of music do you like? Do you have any artists or songs to help you cope with anxiety? Um, I genuinely, I know everyone says this, but I genuinely love all music. I really do. I think just it depends on the day. Sometimes I'm feeling some rap, some hip hop. Some days I'm feeling some R&B. Some days I'm feeling some more indie stuff, more rock stuff, more pop stuff. I really like pop actually. Um, but one song I'm loving right now is called You and Yours by Lucy something. I'll try and leave the song down below if I remember. Um, it's my absolute favorite song. It was in Andres and New Black last season and I heard the song like, what song is that? It's beautiful. And so I'm listening to it all the time at the moment. But sometimes when you're really anxious, the best things to listen to is things you can sing along to, things that, you know, you're not, you don't love that much, but they're great to sing along to and quite, I don't know, things like Little Mix and those kinds of things where you can be like, I know all the words to this and I don't know how I know all the words to this, but I can just sing along really loudly and just know the, I know all the lyrics. Um, I also love David Bowie and I love Queen and yeah, pretty much all music. Um, but that song, absolutely love it. So there are all the questions I got. Oh my God, I don't know how long I was recording for there, but that was a lot of questions I feel. And I feel like I didn't do too badly with time. Um, if you have any more questions, then please leave them down below. I'd love to answer some more questions. I will film some videos from some of these questions. I really want to film a video about anxiety at school and work because 
I know how difficult it is, especially school, just so hard. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you soon. Bye.